Hi, this is Rob Graham, Director of Training at Learning Craft, and this time around I wanted to show you how you might use path-based animation as a way of animating objects through a scene and being able to control where they go and how they act. To begin with, let's start by looking at what we will be creating. And what we have here is a scene that I've set up, and if I run my movie, you'll see that I have a leaf that is falling through the scene and it's doing some nice little curves, and of course it's repeating when it gets to the top of the animation. But the leaf is actually following a path that I've drawn. If I close out of here, you can see this green line here is the path that I've created that this leaf will stick to. So let me show you how this is done. It's fairly straightforward, but sometimes there are a couple subtle issues that you might need to contend with. To begin with, I'm going to go and I'm going to put in a background that I can use as the foundation for the animation. And over here in my library, I have something called Bitmap Autumn Background, and I'm going to go and drag it and place it onto my stage. Now, depending on how well I've done the first time, I might want to use my cursor keys to get it into place. But once I'm happy with the positioning of this, I can either lock the layer down so I don't end up moving it. But what I really need to think about in this case is since I'm doing an animation, how long will the animation last? How long will it take the animation to go from frame one where it begins to whatever frame it ends on? In this case, let's just say that we're going to make sure that the animation goes from frame one to frame 60. That should give the leaf plenty of time to, to do its dance down the, uh, down the stage here. To begin with, I'm going to go and name my layer. Let me just call this background. What I also want to do is I want to make sure that I've extended the animation from frame one out to frame 60. And the way I can do that is I can right click my mouse and I can say insert frame. And what that does is it takes the last keyframe and it copies it forward right to the next spot. So now the background, the trees here, will be available to the animation from frame one all the way to frame 60. Now the layer above here, I'm going to go and name this one leaf. And what I want to do with the leaf layer is I want to create an object that will be able to start at the top and work its way to the bottom. And what I have here in my kit is a bitmap of a leaf. I'm just going to drag a copy in. Now you can see, first of all, this leaf is not only too large for the scene, but it also has this white bounding area. So the first thing I want to do is I want to remove this. To do that, I'm going to select this object by clicking on it, and I can go to my Modify menu and select Break Apart, or I can hit Control b if I'm working on a PC. And when I do that, it looks like a screen has been placed over the image. What I want to do now is I want to find a way to get rid of just the white. Now I have plenty of tools here in Adobe Flash CS3 to help me do the trick. I have the eraser, I have ways of going in and nibbling bits and pieces away, but the easiest thing for me to do would be to use something that allows me to grab just the white. And I can do that using Flash with the Lasso tool. Now it's a little counterintuitive, but by selecting the Lasso tool, I also have a feature down here called the Magic Wand. And with the Magic Wand selected, I can now go over to the object that has been broken apart, and if I click on it, it has gone and selected all the white. Now it doesn't give you a lot of great visual feedback to tell you that something's going on, so you'll have to test it, but once I've clicked, if I press my delete key, then it will remove everything that it identified as being white. And you may be able to see there's a little bit top and bottom here, and I'm just going to use my lasso tool to go and manually grab these pieces. And there's the other piece. And do the best I can to clean it up. So there we are. So now the leaf has been pretty much cleaned up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my selection tool to go and drag a mark key around it to select all of it. And I'm going to group the leaf back by going to the Modify menu and selecting Group or pressing Control G. And that'll put a bounding box around it. And now if I go over and use my Free Transform tool, I can resize the leaf so it, it better fits the scene. And I'm thinking, that's not a bad size right there. That should work pretty well. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to figure out where the animation is going to start and where it's going to end. And it's pretty easy to figure out where it's going to start. We want to start here in frame one. Let me just expand out of here a little bit, go to a 50% view so we can see more of the stage and the surrounding area. I do want my animation to start at the top of the stage. I want the leaf to be off the stage and work its way onto the stage and then end up somewhere down here at the bottom below the stage. So I know where it's going to begin. Now, in order to create the animation, I need to be able to figure out, first of all, the length of time the animation is going to take place. And we've already done this. We figure about 60 frames. And now I can go in here, and if I right-click on frame 60 of the leaf layer, instead of inserting a frame which will just extend the current keyframe over, I want to insert a keyframe. 
And that will take the keyframe, the last keyframe in the timeline, and it will make a copy of it at the end. Now the reason that this is important is we want to be able to have a frame at the beginning and another frame at the end that we can use to identify the two points of the animation. So what I'm going to do is make sure that the leaf starts up here at frame 1 and at frame 60 I'm going to grab that object and I'm going to position it down here at the bottom of the stage. And now we're all ready to put in our tweening animation. I'm going to hold down my shift key and click on this. So I've selected both of the keyframes and all of the area in between. And now down here in my properties window I'm going to go and select motion tween. And as you can see a long arrow appears between the two keyframes which is something that tells us everything was successful. And if I grab my playback head and drag it across you'll see that the leaf indeed does animate from point to point. Now you may be thinking to yourself this is certainly a dull animation and this leaf doesn't have much of a glide ratio. It's kind of more like a rock falling. Well the reason for this is that we haven't yet told it how we want to follow a path. So I'm going to do that next and the way we do this is we go up here to the layer that we want to place a motion guide on. In this case where what object do we want to have follow the path. And if I right click in this area here it pops up this menu here and what we want to select is where it says add motion guide. Now once we select add motion guide you'll notice that the leaf layer indents a little bit here in our timeline and this guide layer becomes really kind of a sub part of this layer. They're now joined together. What this means for us is we can now go to the first keyframe of this layer and I'm going to use my pencil tool and generally find a color that will show up pretty comfortably against whatever the background here. I have this bright green which will certainly do the job. The other thing I need to check on generally if I'm using my pencil tool is I want to make sure down here in the pencil options that I have smooth selected as opposed to straighten. Smooth will allow me of course to have a much nicer line for the leaf to follow. So once smooth is selected I can now go in and once again just starting right above the stage I'm going to go and draw a line based upon my own choosing. I'm going to just have the leaf wiggle down and I like to put a little bit of a loop in there and let's put another one down here and we can put another one down here and then finally the path is going to end off here. So now we have our path in place. It's a matter of getting the leaf to understand what it is supposed to do to follow this path. The way we do this is first of all we go back to our leaf layer and we select the first keyframe. And we select this keyframe, if you look down here in the properties window you'll see the elements that allow us to control the motion tweening, but there are also three checkboxes down here, orient to path, sync, and snap. Now if you're not seeing these for some reason, chances are that you have something toggled off or this window is pulled down a little bit and you may find that if you go in here and click on the little triangle that comes with this that you'll be able to expand the properties window down a little bit. Okay, So they should be here and what I want to do is I want to select snap. Now what snap is going to do is it's going to associate the center point of my leaf to the beginning point of my path line. So if you watch the leaf while I click here it does indeed snap onto the line. And so there's the start and we also have to do the same thing to the last keyframe of this animation and we go down here and select its keyframe and now once again we go and click the snap box and you can see the leaf at the bottom has also snapped to the line. And now if we grab our playback head and we pull it back you'll see that the leaf has found the line and is flowing as we want it to. Let's take a look at how this looks like if we run it. And there goes the leaf doing its thing. Now there's one other way we can enhance this a little bit. This leaf looks a little odd because if you'll notice it really doesn't seem to change its horizontal position. It's always pointing in the same direction which would not be very leaf-like. So what I can do here is if I go to my leaf layer once again I can also select down here the orient to path checkbox. And what this allows it to do, by the way do this at both ends as well, and what this allows your leaf to do is when the line turns the object on that line turns as well. So this is the slight difference we get. You'll notice now instead of always pointing in the same direction, the leaf looks a little more organic, a little more natural as it falls through the scene. Anyway, I encourage you to play around with it and have a little bit of fun, but that's really the fundamentals of using path-based animation. It's really a matter of just creating an animation and then finding a way to link it to a path that you've created. And uh, have some fun with it. Try it in various ways. And like I said, you feel free to come to LearningCraft Flash Kits and uh, download the assets you'll need for this project. 
And remember, at LearningCraft, our job is to help you learn how to do yours. So we can help you either through learning how to do multimedia application development through our online courses or also being able to provide on-site instruction. Please let us know if we can help you out. This is Rob Graham. Hope you have good luck with this one, and I'll see you next time.